Hey everybody! A little while ago, I had an MRI taken of my brain. Everything's okay now, but I wanted to see if I could take those files and turn it into something cool. So when I got access to them, I was able to turn them into a 3D printed version of my brain at one to one scale. If you're interested in doing the same thing with your MRI files, follow along in this video and I can show you exactly how I got it done. If you're disinterested in watching me, I have another video right here in this card that will show you exactly the steps I took and you can just follow along and have fun. So the first thing you're gonna to have to do if you wanna be able to create one of these is to request the MRI scan from your healthcare provider. Now, each provider will have a different way of accomplishing this, but most of them will have some sort of form uh, called like a data request form or something along those lines, which you can submit, often by mail, it's a little slow, but you submit this form detailing exactly what you want, basically saying you want an MRI scan of whatever date that happened, and they are legally obligated to send you oftentimes a DVD containing that data, but they have to send you the data in some form. So you request that DVD, digital file, however they get it, and once you get those files, they'll be called a .dicom file, then you can begin the process. Like most medical imaging, MRIs are sent in what's called a DICOM format, and this stands for Digital Imaging and Communication and Medicine, and it's just a standardized way to share medical imaging with patient data baked in. And lucky for us, there's a super powerful, free, and easy to use software called 3D Slicer. And 3D Slicer is an open source project that lets you view and manipulate all sorts of medical images and really do more or less whatever you want if you have the uh, requisite coding experience to make it happen. Now, in addition to 3D Slicer, there's gonna be two, at least two other programs you're gonna to wanna to download. The first one is called Mesh Mixer, available for free for Windows, and there's also a Mac version, although that's on some uh, shadier site, shall we say, but it is out there. And the third program you're gonna to wanna to download is called Mesh Lab. This is available on GitHub, and it's another great open source uh, mesh editing tool. So this whole process is gonna begin in 3D Slicer. Now, when you first open this up, you're gonna see a couple different options here. One will ask you to load DICOM data. Now, this is what you're gonna to wanna to do with your own files, um, and you would basically just click load, you import your files from either the DVD or the digital file, and then you proceed with the tutorial. To protect my privacy, I'm using some of the default example images, but from here on, the process will be exactly the same. Now, in these three views, the axial, sagittal, and coronal plane, you'll see basically three different cross-sections of the brain at each point that the MRI did a scan. And this lets you recreate a 3D model based on all of those individual 2D scans in each planar direction. So to get things started, we're gonna click this blue button up here, which opens up the extensions manager. Then we're gonna install a program that is called Swiss Skull Stripper. Bit of a strange name, but it's highly effective. And full credit to the creators of these tools, it's very helpful. So once you get that installed, you're gonna to wanna to come over here to the dropdown, then segmentation and Swiss Skull Stripper. Now setting this up is actually pretty simple. You're gonna leave the parameter set as normal. For patient volume, you're gonna select your MRI scan. So for this, it's MR head, but yours will be called something different. So you're gonna select that. Then for the output volume, we're gonna be creating a new volume. So create new volume. Then for the patient mass label, we're gonna do the exact same thing, create a new label map volume. And then your Atlas image will remain as uh, none, but it's built in. So just hit apply. And from there, it's gonna chew on it for just a little bit and spit out your strip skull, which is ready for the next stage in our process. And through the magic of editing, it's done. Now basically what this did is it went through and stripped out the skull, all the soft tissues, all the external fluids that are not our brain, which is exactly what we want if we wanna be able to 3D print the outline of our brain. So moving forward, we're gonna come back down to the dropdown and go to the segment editor. Now from here, this lets you actually see what you have segmented so far. So right now we've just masked out the brain itself, but we still need to actually create those layers into a 3D model. So we'll click the add button to create a new segmentation. Then from here, you can click show 3D, and this is what will eventually create a 3D model up in that fourth panel. Now there are a lot of what they call effects, but are essentially tools for outlining just the parts of the brain that you want. We're gonna start with thresholding and you can do this manually or automatically. I recommend automatically if you don't want to spend hours doing this. And as you see, there's a lot of different algorithms for doing this, but I've had a lot of success with moments. Uh, you know, feel free to try what you want on your brain, it might be better, but moments is definitely a good starting place. So once you hit apply, it will go ahead and isolate those regions and generate the 3D model. 
Now as is, this doesn't look too bad. Definitely some weird artifacting and stuff that we'll clean up, but that is a very recognizable brain and a good starting place for this model. So to start cleaning things up, we're gonna click islands and then remove small islands. This is just gonna get rid of those basically islands or shards that are not connected to anything else. Now you can play around with the minimum size here, uh, but I've had good success in the past with somewhere between 2,500 to 3,500 voxels, which are 3D pixels. As you can see, 2,500 did a decent job. We still got some stuff hanging around, but it's a good place to start. Now, once you've done that, you're gonna go ahead and click on scissors. And this is essentially gonna allow you to go through and trim out regions that you don't want. You can do this on the 2D views, but it's a lot easier just to go ahead and do it in 3D. Now essentially you trace around any hanging areas, stragglers, artifacts, whatever you want. And once you encircle them, they will be eliminated throughout the entire 3D volume. So I recommend just kind of spinning the brain around, seeing different areas, isolating, you know, what view is gonna get you to be able to highlight the whole thing. Then take your scissors in there, draw that outline, make sure you don't get in areas you do want. Luckily you can always use Command Z or Control Z to undo, but from here, you basically go around, clean up any islands that are hanging around, any weird stragglers that were not fixed by the islands. Now once you finish that, there's a decent chance you created some more islands, so it's a good idea just to go back and run the islands uh, operator one more time. And once you've done that, we just have one more step before we're ready to export, and that is smoothing. Now to start off, I would recommend using the opening or remove extrusions tool, and I would keep the kernel size right around three millimeters or so. So what this does is removes all those extrusions, it does fill holes to a certain degree, and generally just makes things smoother. Now once you've done that, you're gonna wanna come back and do median, and this time you're gonna drop the kernel size right around to one, but you can play with it. And this is just gonna apply a general smoothing across all of the brain surfaces, just makes things look a little nicer. And with that done, it's time to export. So segmentation, export to files, select wherever it is you wanna save this file. Then you wanna leave it as an STL and keep the scale at one. And then for coordinate system, RIS is just okay. So go ahead and click export and that will create your file. As you can see, this is about a 23 megabyte file, so nothing too crazy, but we're gonna work on that a little bit later. So for now, we're gonna go ahead and open this with our next program, which is called Mesh Mixer. Now what this is gonna let us do is do some sculpting and cleanup of the model to make it actually printable. First thing we're gonna do is come over here to the inspector under the analysis tab, and as you can see, it's found a bunch of errors, but this is a really good program, so you can just click auto repair, and hey, they're all fixed. Now this is generally pretty accurate, but you just wanna do a quick inspection to make sure it didn't mess anything up. Now from here, you're gonna to wanna to go to the edit tab and then make solid. This is basically gonna go ahead and fill in the model and get rid of any internal cracks and crevices that your printer would just have to spend time dealing with. Now for this, you're gonna to wanna to change the solid type to accurate, bump up the accuracy, bunch up the density, and you wanna leave everything else just at the defaults. Now from here, go ahead and click update and this is gonna generate a preview. This will take a little while, so don't worry about it. But if you're happy with that, then you go ahead and click accept and we can move on. Now you can go ahead and delete your non-solid model here. So just hit the little trash can icon at the bottom and then close out of the object browser. Now the next stage is we wanting to go into the sculpting window. You can also sculpt in Blender, but this is a pretty quick and easy way to do it. Basically I have a wide selection of brushes, different fall offs, different strengths and sizes, and you just have to kind of go through, play with these and sculpt out any irregularities that you see in the brain model. This is definitely more of an art than a science, but you just kind of have to play around and use your art eye. Go ahead and just sculpt out any extrusions like this, any weird bumps, you can fill in holes, just kind of go around and see how things look to your eye and fix what you want to fix. Remember, whatever you don't fix, you're going to end up with in your 3D model, which is not only going to look weird, but will cause increased printing time. So go ahead, try and fix what you can, but don't get too crazy about it. So once you're happy with it, you're going to go ahead and click export and then save to wherever you want as an STL. Now you'll notice this file size is quite a bit bigger than what we had before. That's because we've done through, kind of done a lot of more detail work with the sculpting and it's got a lot more facets to it. So this is where Mesh Lab is gonna come in handy. Now Mesh Lab is actually really useful for a lot of different purposes. We're gonna use it for pretty much the most basic thing you can do, which is reducing the size of a mesh by reducing the facet and vertice count. Now, as you can see here, we're starting with just a little bit over 1.3 million faces and a little over 650,000 vertices. So we can reduce this quite a bit and still maintain the same level of detail and quality in our final print. Now to do this, you're gonna to go to filters, remeshing, simplification, and reconstruction. And then from there, you're gonna go ahead and drop down all the way to quadric edge collapse decimation. 
fun title. So if you want, you can read all about this in the attached paper, but it's more or less, well, I'm not gonna say it's simple, but to do what we wanna do, it's simple enough. Essentially, you enter the target number of faces you want. So for here, we'll try and reduce it by, I don't know, half, somewhere around there. Then you're gonna to wanna to set the quality threshold somewhere between zero and one. I go for one, doesn't really slow things down too much. Then you wanna click preserve boundary of mesh and preserve topology. Then from here, you can just go ahead and click apply. It'll chew on that for a second and then spit out the newly simplified mesh. And since we're happy with the detail here, if you're not, you can go back. We'll go ahead and go to file, export mesh as, call it whatever you want, save it wherever you want. And you're gonna to wanna to change the format from a .ply, which is the default, to a STL and then you can just hit okay with the defaults and that will output your file. Now, as you can see, this is our smallest file size yet, which will be helpful for your 3D printing slicer, which is what we're gonna go into next. So I'm gonna open up in Prusa Slicer, but this will be more or less the same process in Cura or whatever else you wanna use. Now, while you wouldn't actually be able to print this without supports, just for a quick estimate, we can see printing it as is would take just a little over a day, which is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Feasible, but once you add supports, that's gonna be probably the well into you know a day if not two days of solid print time. So an easy way to fix this is to split it up into multiple smaller prints. So we're going to go ahead and rotate the brain down here just onto a relatively flat plane and then from here we're going to use Prusa Slicer's built-in cutting tool to go ahead and take three slices at different heights of the brain. Those are going to be our three different segments that we're going to be able to print separately. Now as is, these are going to take somewhere in the range of 8 to 14 hours to print depending on the size and complexity of your given model. Now this is okay, but definitely room for improvement, right? We have this huge solid block of plastic that's never going to get seen. So let's get rid of that. We're going to go ahead here, go to add a negative volume, and then you can use a cylinder. Any shape could work, but cylinder is probably easiest. You're going to place that in the middle, then use your scale tools to basically get rid of any space you don't want printed, right? We wanna make sure that we're leaving enough room so that we're not getting rid of detail that would be seen from the outside, but you know, more or less that whole inner perimeter can be removed. So if we re-slice that now, you see we went from about 14 hours to nearly nine hours. So that's a pretty good improvement and a lot less material use, which is better for the environment and your wallet. Now you'll repeat this on the other brain parts, but for the base, you're gonna to wanna to figure out a way to mount this. What I did is use the brain stem to be a housing for a pole that will hold up the whole 3D printed brain. So to do that, I did the same negative volume trick, once again with the cylinder, and I basically manipulated it into more or less the same space as the current brain stem. This isn't too great of a model for it here, but yours should be a little bit more well-defined. And essentially you wanna match the diameter of this negative volume to whatever pole you plan on mounting your 3D printed brain to. So I think in my case, this was somewhere around the range of like 10 to 20 millimeters, but I figured exactly. So you're gonna line that up more or less how you want it. And then when you slice it, there'll be a nice empty hole there, which you can use to mount the full 3D printed brain. Once you get everything printed, you're gonna to wanna to connect all your different layers together using some sort of epoxy, CA glue, or other adhesive, depending on what you printed with. Then throw on a couple layers of paint, do some sanding, bondo to fill any holes, and put on a layer of clear coat to make everything look shiny. And you have a finished product, just like that. All right, and that pretty much sums up the process. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful. If you have any comments, please feel free to leave them down below. I'm always eager for feedback. Um, and if you did enjoy this video, consider checking out my other video showing how I went about this process and did a couple extra personal tweaks. Link down in the description and in this card right here. Until the next time, I hope you guys are able to subscribe, like the channel, I'm trying to grow, and I will see you guys in the next one. Stay safe!